Hello, friends and fellow seekers. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice podcast. My name is L, and if I could just ask you to hit the old like button right away, that's going to help this information possibly get to those who need it a little easier than if you didn't. So thank you. And today we are going to be talking about third density repeaters, or how to ascend to the fourth density, or how to deal with those who sleep in your current environment. As I know it can be difficult, and you're wondering how within the realms of free will, am I able to assist other people when they do not want to be assisted? (laughs) At least in the metaphysical realm of learning all these things of the heart. So let us just jump into it. This is going to be from session 13.23 of the raw material in the law of one. And the questioner asks, how does a third density planet become a fourth density planet? And Ra answers, I am Ra. This will be the last full question. The fourth density is, as we have said, as regularized in its approach as the striking of the clock upon the hour. The space-time of your solar system has enabled this planetary sphere to spiral into space-time of a different vibrational configuration. This causes the planetary sphere to be able to be molded by these new distortions. However, the thought forms of your people during this transition period are such that the mind-body-spirit complexes of both individuals and societies are scattered throughout the spectrum instead of becoming able to grasp the needle, shall we say, and point the compass in one direction. Thus, the entry into the vibration of love, sometimes called by your people the vibration of understanding is not effective with the present societal complex. Thus, the harvest shall be such that many will repeat the third density cycle. The energies of your wanderers, your teachers, and your adepts at this time are all bent upon increasing the harvest. However, there are few to harvest. End of quote. So we just jump in there with the whole harvest thing right away. I like to call it ascension or graduation. I know some people (laughs) get the wrong idea with harvest, but just think of the earth and creation as a plant. And, you know, the plant has its fruits that will grow and those fruits shall be harvested. And so, you know, the fruits have seeds as well, etc., etc. But let us back up a little bit into this quote just to give you a little bit of context. The thought forms of our people during this transition period are such that the mind-body-spirit complexes of both individuals and societies are scattered throughout the spectrum instead of becoming able to grasp the needle and point the compass in one direction. And so what is that one direction? Well, my friends, that is the direction of using your heart, of using the heart chakra, of using love. To Just honestly, it's about love and understanding. And I'm going to put in a little addendum on the understanding aspect. We're going to talk about that more towards the end of the podcast, how you actually understanding isn't of this density. <laughs> but wait, wait for that one, okay? So first of all, we need to be able to use our hearts. Um, Right now, our societal complex, you know, basically society is very bent upon, I would, I would think, uh, you know, pitting us all against each other. One of the common tactics that they use is to divide and conquer. And so you'll find that instead of us all coming together and trying to think of how we are more alike and how we can better love each other, you often find society pointing fingers at one another in order to divide us, in order to cause more separation. And this separation that is that we're talking about is what they're talking about with it us being scattered throughout the spectrum. We're not all pointing the compass in the direction of love and understanding in terms of understanding each other and the heart of each other's desires and thoughts. Instead, we're all about straw manning each other and (laughs) and being like, hey, you're a bad person and here's why you're a bad person. This is why I hate you, blah, 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 blah. And so this is what we want to try to avoid. Even when we live in a society with many polarizing topics that we could all disagree upon, it is better to sometimes agree to disagree. In other words, don't let the little fine points of disagreement come between the love of you and other selves. It is more important that you learn to love other people than it is to learn how to reason with them about certain things. And because of all this turmoil and all this separation on this planet at the moment, they state the harvest shall be such that many will repeat third density cycle. The energy of your wanders, teachers, adepts at this time are all bent on increasing this harvest, this graduation. However, there's going to be few to harvest. So that's a little bit sad to hear, right? That there's billions of people on this world and the majority of them will be repeating third density. 
you know, hopefully we're not them, but who knows? Maybe you are too. Maybe I am too. Maybe I don't even got this completely down correctly. I'm not using my heart wonderfully, <laughs> but, but I, I sure hope not. Um, anyways, so the idea is, is that, yes, they're going to repeat third density. And that may sound like a sad thing, but you can try to put it in a positive light. I like to think of it as the creator has infinite patience infinite time for us to make our own decision with our free will. As they state in other sections of the material, the first distortion of this universe is free will. Free will created love, the creative principle which created light, and that light is everything that you see is the creation before us. But the point being is that the first distortion is the distortion of free will. So our free will is held high above pretty much any other thing that you could think about. And that's why I like to to think that this repeating of third density is just the creator respecting our free will, our time to come to the conclusions that we need to come when we wish to come to them. Otherwise, you know, you have all the time in the universe, many, many, many incarnations that you can have where you can go through third density until you're ready to put down, let's say, the brain and the logic portions of your self that get defensive and learn to love yourself and to learn to love one another. And so Ra in there, in the Law of One material, they also talk about how, you know, this is like an entity of consciousness. So they've, they've been around for quite some time. And they, like millions and millions of years ago, had their third density cycle on Venus. And so the same thing as is going on with our planet here, on their planet did Venus at the time, millions of years ago, was going through this sort of harvest time, this graduation time, ascension time. And they had other people on their planet that also were Aren't seeking with the compass all pointing in the same direction, right? So we're having some of their own third density repeaters on their planet. So how does Ra act in those conditions? Well, let me tell you. In session 89.29, Ra states, those of us which had the gift of polarity felt deep compassion for those who seemed to dwell in darkness. There was every attempt made to reach out with whatever seemed to be needed. However, those upon the positive path have the comfort of companions, and we of Ra spent a great deal of our attention upon on the possibilities of achieving spiritual or metaphysical adepthood or work in indigo ray through the means of relationships with other selves. Consequently, the compassion for those in darkness was balanced by the appreciation of light. End of quote. And I'm going to read you another quote in a moment with some even more clarity, but let's just talk about that one briefly. So those of us with the gift of polarity, that is another way of saying that those of us who have polarized within uh, to a certain point that are, I would suggest are using the heart and basically have made the decision to either serve the self exclusively at the expense of all other selves because you're on the service to self polarity, or you see yourself and all other selves as sort of metaphysical equals in the eyes of oneness, in the eyes of the creator, that we are all the creator, and therefore you have the gift of polarity on the service to others aspect. So they who had the gift of polarity, obviously you have deep compassion for those who are sleepy, um, right? Those who seem to be lost or those who seem to dwell in darkness, and you want to do what you can to try to help them. Um, like they said, there was every attempt made to reach out with whatever seemed to be needed. However, you can't really help everyone because why because of that whole free will aspect where they're going to decide the way that they want to decide so Ra states that they sort of balanced this aspect you know within themselves by more so focusing on relationships with other selves who i suppose are of also similar positive polarity or if not they're just focusing on how to love other selves and that for you know allowed them to come to a, a sort of open heart chakra within themselves which allows them to graduate on to the next density because they are focused on the harmony and love of other selves. Um, but at the same time, they still, you know, are going to be trying to reach out to those who sleep. And so in session 89.30, for those who sleep, what can you do? And they state, to those who wish to sleep, we could only offer those comforts designed for sleeping. Service is only possible to the extent that it is requested. We were ready to serve in whatever way we could. This still seems satisfactory as a means of dealing with other selves in third density. It is our feeling that to be each entity which one attempts to serve is to simplify the grasp of what service is necessary or possible. End of quote.
So the way I read this, in my opinion, is they're just trying to give you a realistic viewpoint of wh how what it means to serve somebody who is a third density repeater or somebody who's sleepy or somebody who doesn't really want to be helped. Um, they state, you know, we could only offer it those comforts designed for sleeping. <laughs> it maybe it doesn't sound the best, like they're trying to make them you know, easier to sleep. But at the same time, I mean, it's their free will. They want to do what they want to do. And so the least we could do is at least not make their sleeping in darkness um, a terrible, terrible experience, which maybe only pushes them further into darkness. But would it, would it not be better to offer them some comfort in some way that allows them to at least see the, the love and charity of, of yourself and sort of being that example of, of a, a positive polarity entity? And who knows, maybe they then will use Use their free will to come along and try to join you something like that because once with the free will service is only possible to the extent that it is requested and this is true you may want to serve other people and and try to help them but you know you're only going to be doing more harm to your cause if you're trying to serve somebody who does not want to be served um, they will just sort of misunderstand or misinterpret the things that you're trying to tell them and, and feel like you're trying to control them, which you kind of are. And controlling is not a service to others attitude. A service to, a service to others attitude is about acceptance. And so if we're working with, with service to others, polarity, and we're working with the heart chakra and trying to love people, we're trying to accept them better. We're trying to accept ourselves better. So they go on to state, we were ready to serve in whatever way we could. This still seems satisfactory as a means of dealing with other selves and third density. In other words, that seems to be the most satisfactory thing you can probably do here on Earth in our third density. And this last part is really important. It is our feeling that to be each entity which one attempts to serve is to simplify the grasp of what service is necessary or even possible. So, you know, the way to say this is just to put yourself into someone else's shoes and try to think of what they, how they see life and the way that they see this creation about them and simplify your attitude into instead of trying to teach them about the law of one and ascension and heart chakras and all of that stuff, no, throw it out the window, do keep it simple, right? And simplify the grasp of what service is necessary or possible. So what is necessary or possible once again has to go into the realms of free will what do they want? What do they seek? What what kind of avenue can you go down to in conversation with them or whatever that might be something that you can get a drop a seed for their heart to to hopefully be able for them to enter their own heart and and grow up into it, right? But 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 if you try too hard and you try to control and you push too much and you're dropping seeds and you're having expectation of outcome with them, then you're only going to be letting down yourself and it's not going to be easy because you need to love yourself as well and sort of as you fail in your attempts to serve other people because you're a little overzealous in the way that you're approaching people, it's going to bring you down. And so you know, I've found in my long time of seeking that the best sorts of these interactions with other selves come from them approaching you and you then giving you know the best that you can that to, to in order to satisfy their sort of questions or their vision of, of whatever they're asking about it it's when I have when I have instead tried to force my view upon others, it really only just kind of comes back to you and kicks you in the butt later and you realize that, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't have done that. But to put this in a better way, I think like what's a realistic way to be and to deal with other people? I think you need to freely and spontaneously be the loving entity that you are and you can do that to, to everyone. It doesn't have to matter necessarily about their free will. I mean, you seek to love other selves, and so you want to be a good force of love. And you can even talk about some of these spiritual metaphysical things from time to time, just putting out in the ethers, not necessarily directed at any one person. And then what happens is, is that when those sort of sleepy people, those third density repeaters, have something that kind of kickstarts their heart a bit, they might think of you, and they might come to you later at a later time like could even be years later right this has happened to me years later someone comes to you because they remember you used to talk about this stuff back in the day and now they would like you to elaborate on some things and so you know those are the times that i find the 
best sort of success, even though we shouldn't be measuring service in terms of success. It's, you know, but that is the, the most successful times I've had in feeling like I've made a good connection and, and encouraged someone to use their heart more. Um, they've always been from, from me acting that way in a sort of free caring way of, okay, I'm just going to put the information out there. If you like it, great. If you don't, no worries. It's not for you. Um, but those people will come around. And in fact, because they don't feel that you're trying to control them into a certain point of view, they will only just rub them even in a better way when, when they really are ready to come to you and they'll be ready to listen. And so I know we've talked about other selves a lot throughout this podcast so far, but you may be also wondering about yourself. Well, what would I do to get stuck in their density, right? What would I do to to repeat this density? So I'll, I'll give you a real simple quote here from session 12.29 about karma. And the questioner asks, what could one of these entities do to become karmically involved? Could you give us an example? And actually, maybe I'll just add my own little thing in there. Before before this question, I recall Ra mentioned something about um, a wanderer who incarnates on Earth in order to try to assist in the harvest, to assist in the graduation to fourth density, who unfortunately came, becomes karmically involved and therefore incarnated and sort of became part of the problem instead of trying to incarnate and become part of the solution to, you know, the whole intention for their, for their incarnating here on third density was to assist other people in this transition. So the questioner asks, what could one of these entities do to become karmically involved? Could you give us an example? And Ra states quite simply, I am Ra, an entity which acts in a consciously unloving manner in action with other beings can become karmically involved. End of quote. So what would you like to highlight there? consciously unloving manner so an entity who acts and it also says acts i must have to underline that a little bit in a consciously unloving manner so you can be unloving in your ways in your life in your you know your incarnation here even as you were younger you didn't know about these types of things um, and so you kind of have a bit of a grace period i would state but even then you might still have some karma involved but it, it can be reconciled throughout your life through forgiveness um, but anyways the point is is that if you act in a consciously unloving manner so not unconsciously but consciously if you're really going out and you know what you're doing is unloving, <laughs> then stop, my friends, right? Do not act in an unloving manner. Uh, you're just going to become karmically involved. And it's okay, once again, karma can be alleviated through forgiveness of self and other self. Um, but, you know, it's probably best to avoid that to whatever degree that is possible. And then let us finish with the love and understanding, because this can get complicated for some people, because we're in the third density, the density of choice, the choice of how to serve others or to serve the self, and we are moving into the fourth density, the, the, which is sometimes called the density of love and understanding. And so you wonder, you know, we're, we want to be loving, right? I'm trying to tell you in this podcast, yeah, you want to be a creature of love. So would we not want to act in complete fourth density ways of love and understanding? understanding and yes we would but the point is is that the fourth density is of understanding we are still in the third density this is not a density of understanding and so <laughs> what the way that i reconcile this in my head like what do they mean by this type of thing uh well first of all let me just read you this question and answer and then i'll elaborate a bit so in section 16.39 the questioner asks i am assuming it is not necessary for an individual to understand the law of one to go from third density to fourth density. Is this correct? Ra answers, I am Ra. It is absolutely necessary that an entity consciously realize it does not understand in order for it to be harvestable. Understanding is not of this density. End of quote. So how do you be loving, but you don't really be understanding? It's not that you're not being understanding. When you're loving somebody, you definitely are trying to understand things from their point of view. But the I think the thing is that an understanding is like a misnomer. It can be interpretive in a number of ways. And so true understanding comes from when the veil is lifted from our experience and we truly get to see how we feel and how others feel in a in a true manner it's almost like the, all of the the veil is lifted and there's no more shadow land to confuse you you get to understand the intentions of other people and you get to understand the intentions of yourself only when you are in that sort of field of density in the fourth density will you know true understanding understanding 
is not of this density and the way that i interpret that is to say to put it another way is to say sometimes we think that logic and wisdom and knowing the law of one and knowing all the metaphysical rules and principles of this and that is how we're going to move on from the third density to the fourth density and i would assure you that is not the way you can know all of the things that that i know and and you and this is why i state that i don't want to like assume that i'm making it to the fourth density per se right you can know all of the logic and the wisdom and the law of one metaphysical principles and know the rules of the universe but if you you do not put them into action within yourself you shall not make it my friend and so me putting that another way is you can know all the logic and wisdom but if you're not using your heart and being a loving and heart-centered being in your experience then you are putting let's say the misnomer understanding above the energy of the heart which then you've made a mistake right it's not about the philosophy it's about whether you're just a good person a good being a loving entity and that's why they that's why you can basically just sum it up as you must understand that you do not understand and so even when things get all mucky and confusing on this planet um, what you can really rely on and know is that as long as you are using your heart then you are doing fine you are doing your best i mean what more can we do but try to love one another and to love ourselves that is the reason that we are here we have made that choice to either serve others or serve the self and so if we've made that choice to serve others you have that service to others polarity the service to others polarity works with the heart chakra the center chakra of the seven chakras which is like the center of the universe in my opinion it all revolves around love and so to move on in from this third density to the fourth density we need to be creatures of love we do need to enact and exemplify love and understanding in our life and that love and understanding comes from you know the, the ability to put down logic to put down words when when they seem that they're not working right we don't want to talk people into heaven you'll never talk someone into heaven you can only experience each other's hearts and, and, and encourage each other's hearts to be open and loving towards each other. That's how we get to the next density. That's how we get to the old heaven type scenario thing. So understanding is not of this density, meaning logic and wisdom aren't of this density. We will learn the wisdom and we're going to learn all of the understandings in the next density when the veil is lifted and we get to understand the intentions and the energy that we have put out into the world and we get to see how that affected every single other entity on this planet you'll get to see when when the veil lifts and you move on from this density you'll be able to see how your energy interacted with other people in your family and your friends and online and even how that energy that you started then moved on from them <laughs> to other people to other people to other people how just like the ripples in the water you know you throw the rock in the water that love love rock in the water and it's just going to ripple out and you don't need to understand all the ripples you don't need to make sense of them per se you just need to know that you don't know and that all you really know is that love is right and love is correct and to be in this density and to be a creature of love is what we are here to do and so my friends i implore you to try your best and to love yourself love other selves that what more can we do this place is really confusing. We could get lost in politics. <laughs> we can get lost in any types of things about uh, metaphysical, spiritual, this, that, all of these facts that go around. And we can argue about those till the end of time. But what, what we should be doing is putting those aside from time to time and remembering that we are all creatures of the one infinite creator. This whole creation started from free will which created love which created light which which created this whole everything that we see this illusion this these galaxies everything but it's all for love my friends love is what created this whole experience and so we need to enter into love and and be a part of that creative principle and that is what we're here to do and i am rambling so thank you guys all for listening i hope this made some sense i hope that we were able to connect a little bit heart to heart and i hope you don't worry too much about third density repeaters because it can be sad and it can bring your heart down a bit um, but in my opinion just find people to love right like i recently 
been with my girlfriend for the past few years, and the more confusing the world gets, the more that I just try to love her the most purely that I can and serve her. And, and what more can I do, <laughs> right? Other than to also get on to here and, and try to spread some love and, and serve all of you as well, because it's just what makes sense to me. And I hope it makes sense to you. And I hope these ripples can make it out into your life. And you can then share those ripples out and, and make it go further and further. And we can possibly polarize a few sleepy people on this planet and, you know, get them <laughs> pointing that compass in the same direction. And so thank you, my friends. If you appreciate the podcast once again can you just smash that like button you make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more leave me a comment i read every comment i love you guys and if you want to also support my efforts i do wish to give this in a freely give freely receive manner so don't want to put anything behind any type of paywall i just like to give it for free but i do need some of your support if you have abundance to share you can go on the one infinite creator.com scroll down to the support section send me a one-time paypal coffee as they say right or more preferably i would really appreciate it if you jumped on my patreon that gives me the longevity to do this in a way where i can plan accordingly to keep doing this and possibly even to expand and you know maybe even show you guys my face get a camera one of these days and and really put myself out there because i'm getting close i'm really getting close to doing it but yes i appreciate all of your support i love you all thank you take care